I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I want to show you how to make a Japanese beef stew called Hayashi Daisu. So stick around. There's a lot of debate about where the name came from, and each one has a story that dates back over a hundred years. Whatever the history, it's become a popular comfort food here in Japan, and these days most people make it with paper thin slices of meat and an instant roux, which makes it an easy convenience food. For my version, I like to use bigger hunks of stew meat and cook them low and slow until they're spoon tender. By browning the beef, mushrooms, onions, and roux, it develops layers of umami and flavor that make it rich and comforting without being heavy or cloying. It's a bit of work, but I promise it's worth the effort. So let's have a look at our ingredients. For the mushrooms, I have 300 grams of shimeji mushrooms, 200 grams of cremini mushrooms, 200 grams of enoki mushrooms, a half teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of cultured unsalted butter. For the beef, I've got 550 grams of stew meat, a teaspoon of salt, and some black pepper. These may look more like steaks than stew meat, but if you look up close, you can see lots of tough connective tissue. This is made up of collagen that's going to melt and make the beef fall apart tender as it cooks. I'm using shanks today because they have a ton of collagen, but short ribs or chuck are both great options. I'm also going to be using a quarter cup of water, one tablespoon of olive oil, 25 grams of garlic, and 700 grams of onions. To stew these, I've got two cups of beef stock, one cup of red wine, three tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of ketchup, two tablespoons of chuno sauce, one tablespoon of mild honey, and two teaspoons of porcini powder. For the roux, we're using a tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon of butter. To clean the creminis, you want to use a damp paper towel to wipe the caps and stems off and remove any bits of dirt or growing medium that might be clinging to them. Then I'm going to slice these in half. Depending on how large they are, you may need to quarter them or you may not need to cut them at all. Cultivated shimeji mushrooms are clean, but they do have a puck of growing medium attached, so you'll need to trim this off. This should make them fall apart like this. Enoki mushrooms also need to be trimmed of growing medium. Then you can use your hands to shred the mushrooms into small clusters. For the onions, I'm going to slice them in half and chop them into half inch slices. These are going to mostly dissolve and we're not aiming to caramelize them so there's no need to slice them too thinly. For the garlic, I'm going to cut slits towards the root end on one side. Then I'm going to rotate the clove 90 degrees and repeat the slits on this side. Then we can rotate the garlic 90 degrees on the other axis and mince it up. These don't have to be perfect either, but if you have some big chunks remaining, you can go back over them with a knife like this. For the beef, I like cutting it into cubes that are about an inch and a half in size. Cutting them smaller will make them cook faster, but I love cutting these big hunks up with a spoon as I eat my Hayashi rice. Let's get these into a tray in a single layer, and now I'm gonna season two sides of the cubes with a generous amount of salt and pepper. All right, our prep's done, so let's start cooking. I'm going to add 3 tablespoons of butter into a large heavy bottomed pot over medium low heat. Then I'm going to toss in all of the mushrooms. I know this looks like way too much, but don't worry, they're going to shrink. Sprinkle on a half teaspoon of salt and cover the pot with a lid. Now you want to let these steam for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes are up, the mushrooms are going to be swimming in their own juices, so you want to turn the heat up to quickly boil it off so we can start browning them. Keep stirring the mushrooms periodically, and after 10 to 15 minutes, your mushrooms should start looking like this. Transfer the mushrooms to a bowl and set them aside. Now I'm going to add the olive oil and the beef. 
Make sure you leave a little space between each cube so the beef browns properly. You want to let these fry undisturbed for about 3 to 4 minutes or until you get a nice brown crust on one side. Then you can flip them over and brown the other side for about the same amount of time. Once the beef is browned on two sides, transfer it out of the pot. Now we're going to add the onions, garlic, and the water, and then I'm going to cover the pot up with a lid. Let these steam for 10 minutes. And when you open up the pot, your onions should be nice and wilted like this. Then you want to saute these for another 10 minutes or until they just start to brown. You could get them darker if you want, but unlike curry, caramelized onions aren't a core part of the flavor profile for Hayashi Daisu, so this is good enough. Now we're going to add the wine, beef stock, tomato paste, ketchup, chuno sauce, honey, and porcini powder. Then we're going to return the beef to the pot as well. Okay, give this a stir, and then you want to bring the mixture up to a full boil. You'll probably see some foam starting to float to the surface, so use a shallow ladle or a fine mesh skimmer to remove all of this coagulated protein. Once you don't see any more scum rising to the surface, Turn down the heat to low, cover the pot with a lid, and we're going to let this stew for about 2 hours. Be sure to check on it and give it a stir every 30 minutes or so to ensure you've got enough liquid and the stew isn't burning to the bottom of the pot. Before we see how this turned out, I want to take a moment to thank all of my supporters. Whether you've signed up for my secret stash of recipes on Patreon, or you're just sharing my videos on social media. Your support is what keeps me going, so thank you. If you've learned something new from my recipes and you want to see how you can help, hit the link in the description down below to see what you can do. Okay, this has been simmering for about two hours now, and you can see we have a few big pools of oil that have rendered out from the beef. A little bit is okay, but my beef had a lot of marbling, so I'm going to skim some of this off so our Hayashi Dice doesn't end up greasy. Let's check and see how the meat is doing. And I'd say that's done, wouldn't you? Alright, time to add the sautéed mushrooms back in. I'm going to give that a stir. And this is looking pretty amazing, but we still need to add the finishing touch. Let's move over to the other burner and heat a frying pan over medium heat. I'm going to add the butter and flour and fry this mixture for about 3 minutes or until the roux turns golden brown. This will not only thicken the Hayashi Daisu, it's also going to add a wonderful nutty flavor. Okay, this is looking good, so let's get this into the stew. To keep the roux from clumping, I recommend scooping a few ladlefuls of liquid from the stew into the frying pan with the roux. Then you can mix this together until it's nice and smooth before pouring it all back into the pot. Now you want to quickly stir this into the stew. And when it's nice and thick like this, our Hayashi Daisu is done! Just look at how smooth and creamy that is. Alright, let's get this plated up. As the name implies, Hayashi Daisu is served with a side of Japanese short grain rice. And I'm going to ladle this luscious stew onto our plate and partially cover the rice so we can mix it up as we eat it. This looks and smells amazing, but I think I'm going to hit the rice with a sprinkle of chopped parsley for a pop of color, and our Hayashi Daisu is good to go. Alright, let's try this Hayashi Daisu out. Itadakimasu! It smells incredible and it looks beautiful. Let's go in with a little bit of rice here, so I'm going to get some rice and mix it in with the roux. 
Get a little beef and mushrooms. Oh. The roux thickened up the sauce just enough to coat the rice without being heavy or cloying. And you've got that acidity from the tomatoes that give it a nice bright contrast to the rich roux. And we've got those three kinds of mushrooms in there that are not only adding a ton of umami, they give it this really nice texture as well. You know, you'd think they'd call this Hayashi beef, but when you have the combination of the rice with the beef together, you understand why it's called Hayashi rice. <laughs> you know how they say fork tender? Well, this is spoon tender. Mmm. So good. I decide what recipes to make next based on past ones that have done well. So if you want to see more videos like this, let me know with a thumbs up and by sharing a link to this with your friends. Well, I'm gonna go sit down and have the rest of this Hayashi rice, but check out this playlist for more delicious Japanese comfort food and I'll catch you in the next one.